One might think it's impossible to shock anyone in the current day with anything said about the Nazis and their horrific attempt to sterilize the world to their liking. After all, don't we already know everything we need to know? That's what made the recent statement from the daughter-in-law of the man who was in charge of sending hundreds of thousands of Jews to extermination centers all the more shocking, defending the actions of Adolf Eichmann as someone who only obeyed orders and didn't personally kill anyone. Starting point, let's welcome the senior editor of the National Review and author of the fascinating new book, Children of Monsters, an inquiry into the sons and daughters of dictators, Jay Norliger. Jay, thanks so much for joining us. And let me just take from what I said at the top. We supposedly know so much about the Nazis after decades, generations of learning. But in your book, there's a lot we don't know because those children are still out there. And like this, just a daughter-in-law, though, still putting forth that idea that these were just people doing a job. Yes, the, the sons and daughters tend to be pretty loyal. And as we can see in this case, a daughter-in-law is loyal too. There are some dissenters, some rebels, some doubters, but mainly you have loyalists and apologists. That's right. So then let's get to this core because there are stories that have been told. Yet why did you decide to tell this story? Because we've heard from sons and daughters before, but yours goes much deeper. Yes, I've done a survey of sons and daughters of dictators, a string of stories or life sketches with some common themes. It's sometimes a creepy book or a ghoulish one. There's some depravity in it, of course, but there are also streaks of light, some uplift. I was in Albania some years ago, and Enver Hoxha had ruled that country with an iron fist and war for about 40 years. And I wondered whether Hoxha had had children. And he did. And I wondered what their lives were like. Could they go out? Did they have to change their name? How did people treat them? And so on. And so that led to this very unusual, but I think interesting book. Did you find those sons and or daughters of dictators who were willing to say to anybody at any time flat out, my father was wrong, my mother was wrong, they were monsters. Very, very few such people. Uh, Svetlana Stalin defected to the United States in 1967 and wrote a few memoirs which are searing and honest. A daughter of Fidel Castro defected to Miami in the 1990s with a false passport and a wig. Her name is Alina Fernandez. Uh, she worked as a, a radio host, an anti-Castro voice in Miami. There have been other doubters, but those are the, you might say, spectacular defectors. When you talk to them, do they speak of their parents, the ones who defend them, do they speak of them lovingly or speak to them also as children who will completely ignore history? Well, there is a lot of denial among these sons and daughters. And when I was writing this book, I passed a poster here in New York for the Broadway show Jersey Boys, which is about early rock and roll. And the tagline was, everyone remembers it the way he needs to. And I thought, you know, that's true of a lot of these men and women I'm studying. They're in denial, so to speak. I think they sort of have to be. Otherwise, they might go nuts. And some of them are nuts enough as it is. There are still stories that need to be told. And after you interviewed these folks, I got about 30, 40 seconds left. How chilling was it for you to hear a lot of these sons and daughters talk about their parents? Well, um, it can be sort of sickening to hear whitewashing of monstrous crimes. And one of Idi Amin's sons, Jafar, does this. But he has other moods in which he is clear and he's confessional and he works for reconciliation among Ugandans. So that's good. He's a mixed bag, which is better than all negative. Uh, it is better than all negative, but just absolutely to think that there are those who would defend them. But then again, it is family, and sometimes family will stand by anybody regardless. I want to remind everybody once again of the book, Children of Monsters, an inquiry into the sons and daughters of dictators. There are so many stories we still don't know. And this will help fill in some of the gaps as well. Jay Norlinger, a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. Good luck with the book. I hope we talk again soon. Stay with us because when we continue more of the fastest 60 minutes of news, this is The Hardline.